and welcome to a new review of a pair of speakers this time. These are quite high end in terms of price. We're looking at nine and a half thousand pounds. But before you run off and you say, oh, it's a bit above my budget and you go and make yourself a coffee and grab a sticky bun, just hang around for a little bit because these are strange, different, slightly weird speakers and just on a hi-fi level, I think they might be of interest to you. And if you have the budget for these speakers, they're definitely worth a look. There's some good points. There's some not so good points, I would say, but it's definitely an interesting design. The speakers are made by an English company called Mellow Acoustics. The speakers themselves are called Front Row. They're interesting because they are a hybrid. Now, if you saw the thumbnail, and I'm sure you did, when I said these speakers are alive, they are. The top bit, that round bit, is an electrostatic panel. You actually have to plug in each of these speakers into the mains. And what happens when you do that? The electrostatic panel is charged. It is alive with electricity. Now, the thing about a hybrid speaker like the front row is that it's partly electrostatic technology. It's that ram bit at the top is the electrostatic panel, as I say. But at the bottom, we have a sort of almost triangular looking base bin, a triangular looking cabinet. This is filled with a woofer. And we'll get to the techie aspects of all of these things during the closer look section. But just to let you know for now, the lower frequencies are enhanced by this base cabinet. So hopefully with a bit of luck, we'll be looking at a greater tonal balance in terms of the mids and the treble from the electrostatic panel and the lower frequencies from this base cabinet. Now, before we go any further, I have to declare an interest, not in the company or the design, but in the technology itself. I am a major fan of electrostatic technology. I have electrostatic speakers. I have electrostatic headphones. I drink electrostatic coffee. I love the technology. I have used a pair of Quad 57 electrostatics, albeit with new panels from One Thing Audio based in Coventry in the UK. But I've been using my 57s for goodness knows how many years. I've also used Quad 63s, which are not quite as good. Very nice, don't get me wrong, very nice, but not quite as good as the 57s, I have to say. But I do love the electrostatic sound. So before we get to the closer look section, I'd just like to discuss two quick areas. Firstly, what's the big deal with electrostatics? The inherent design of electrostatic technology gives me something, at least, that boxed speakers fail to provide. A skip load of information in the midband and treble areas. I'm not talking about good detailed response here that you often hear about in hi-fi magazine reviews, nor the, quote, impressive detail you might read about from a few top-notch boxed models. Oh no, I'm referring to the dropping of the jaw that only an electrostatic panel can really trigger. That sense of realism that reaches such heights that the ear cannot keep up. You need to hear the same track three times to notice all down. I'm talking about true realism. And then there's the other thing, the aesthetics, what these speakers look like. I find the keyhole shaped design of the mellow front row wholly, utterly, and completely ugly. In terms of style, they have zero redeeming features. And if it wasn't going to harm the Sonics, and I'm afraid it would, because otherwise I'd have done it, I'd put a paper bag over that annoying circular bit at the top. So hey, I've declared that I don't really like the look of these speakers, so that's gonna result in a bad review, yeah? No, not at all. To me, speakers are tools, no more. So although I have a view on the aesthetics of these speakers, I have an opinion, it doesn't mean that I will be put off buying them because the actual look of the speakers is less important to how they sound. My priority is the music. My priority is, well, if they sound great, lovely. They can look like a cheese sandwich with extra tomato. I couldn't really, when it comes right down to it, care what they look like in terms of a final purchase. So even though I think these speakers look as ugly as sin, to quote Duke Ellington, 
it don't mean a thing. And on that note, I think we should take a closer look. And welcome to the closer look section for the Mellow Acoustics front row hybrid speakers. And these speakers are certainly striking. The structures themselves are built, well, actually hand built in England. They even use local craftsmen, for goodness sake. These speakers are pretty small in height and retain a relatively small footprint, so it won't take up too much space in your listening room. I have to say that was a little odd in a sort of neat speakers kind of way to see these designs sitting so low on my listening room floor. I kept getting the urge to put them on a pair of stands or fitting legs underneath them. Now, during this review, I've been in communication with the designer, a very nice chap named Tim Mello, Tim Mello of Mello Acoustics. And I asked him about the relatively small size of these speakers. And he confirmed that it was down to the reduced typical electrostatic speaker panel size. And this is true. My Quad 57s look like a large pair of radiators. I need a ladder to see over the top of those things. He also felt that the size and shape of the front row designs helped the off-axis performance. Even so, Mello did say, and I quote, should the front row prove successful, I would like to bring out a version that is one and a half times larger in width, height, and depth for people with larger listening rooms. A bit of advice if you do buy these speakers in terms of setup, make sure the speakers are at least 40 centimeters away from the rear wall and 30 centimeters away from a side wall before you use them, just to maximize the sound performance. Tim Mello added another piece of advice. He suggested if, for example, you have a bare wooden floor to add a piece of carpet or a rug in front of the speakers to prevent reflections from the floor, causing what he calls the comb filter effect. Now, if you want to know more about the comb effect, I'll put some information from the designer Tim Mello, and you can read all about that in the description box below. Now, this flat circular panel is a little bit different from the usual electrostatic thing. It actually works slightly different from the usual electrostatic speaker designs, at least the designs I'm aware of. Why? Well, the circular nature of the panel on the front row means that the sound radiates from the center of the panel moving outwards with sort of circular wave patterns moving slowly and steadily from the center towards the very edge of the panel and then outwards into the air, a bit like ripples in a pond. Again, if you'd like to know more about the front rows technicalities in this area, I will place some information directly from Tim Mello below in the description box. Now, in terms of pure measurements, the electrostatic unit on the top there spans 305 millimeters. It handles the mid-range and the treble frequencies. Below in that triangular looking cabinet at the bottom features a mid-base unit of 100 and 33 millimeters. The unit itself is pushed by a neodymium motor in a sealed container. The crossover starts at a pretty low 600 hertz and moves to 20 kilohertz. Again, I asked Tim Mello about this crossover unit because as I say, it starts pretty low. So I asked him how that might have affected the sound. And again, I will put his reply in the description below and you can check that out for yourself when you fancy. Finish is variable from the standard light oak, and by that I mean you can order these speakers in a veneer of your choice. You'll pay for that option, although the price is dependent on your requirements. Now, a quick word about the veneer. Now, look, I'm pretty ignorant about veneer and how you apply it and the limitations of the same, but these speakers are just under £10,000. And if I was spending that amount of money, I don't know, maybe I'm being picky here, maybe I'm being over picky, but I would like to see no joins in the veneer. I would like to see a smooth transition in the veneer without any apparent joins. And you can certainly see the join 
here. Now, as I say, I'm being super picky and maybe I'm being completely unfair. And if I am, I apologize. And I don't know if there's any craftsmen out there who can advise me on this, but is it possible to produce a one piece veneer on this speaker? But having this join, I don't know, it just jars me a little bit. I think it'd be fine if these speakers were one, two thousand pounds, but nearly 10K for a pair of speakers. Uh, I would like to see a nicer finish, put it that way. Onto the grill cloths on the front, they are available in gunmetal, navy or burgundy. Underneath the cloth of the electrostatic unit is a screen to reject dust and moisture. Now, as I've already said, before you use these speakers, you've got to plug them into the mains. And to connect these speakers, Mellow Acoustics add a pair of bog standard cables. Each cable arrives with a figure of eight connector. Now, personally, I'm all about upgrading and enhancing and tweaking. And the one thing I like about standard electrostatic speakers is that they arrive with an IEC socket. That means I can upgrade mains cables if I fancy, and that's what I've done with my Quad 57s. And there is a certain amount of sonic enhancement because of that. The problem with these bog standard speakers is they're bog standard. So this cable is the same cable you may use to plug in a, I don't know, 10 pound Chinese radio, for example. I think Mellow Acoustics can do better. The problem is you might find it difficult to do better anyway, because the choice of audiophile quality mains cables with a figure of eight connector is pretty low. Now there is a reason why Tim Mellow picked this particular connector. And again, I will put those reasons in the description box and you can read them for yourself. I've already read them and still I would prefer an IEC solution of some sort. These speakers span a relatively low key 762 millimeters by 494 by 291 millimeters. These 8 ohm designs have a sensitivity of 84 decibels, which is pretty low, so I would forget hooking up low-powered valve amplifiers to these speakers. Most higher-powered valve amplifiers will be fine, as will most solid-state amps. You're looking really at a minimum power requirement of around 25 watts. So that's the techie aspect of the Mellow Acoustics front row speakers. But how do these things actually sound? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. And welcome back to the sound quality tests for the Mellow Acoustics front row hybrid speakers. Now, before we dive into the actual sound quality, I need to add something, a little note before we get to that point, because if you buy a pair of electrostatic speakers, you're looking for something. You don't buy electrostatic speakers because you're hunting for bass quality. You're not looking for a bass monster if you think of electrostatic technology. You're looking for sublime detail, fragility in the upper mids, delicacy in the treble. That's your main focus. Bass is great. Extra bass is wonderful. It's a bonus. It's a nice thing to have. My Quad 57s have new panels with extra bass performance. It's lovely. It's a bonus. I really enjoy it, but I really go initially the main reason, the headline for electrostatic technology in the first place is that detail. It's the information, it's the mid-range and the treble performance. That's what I'm really looking for. That's what anyone who wants electrostatic technology in their lives, that's what they're really looking to gain. So do the Mellow Acoustics front row speakers actually deliver on those terms? To facilitate that hopeful revelation, I began the sound tests with vinyl and Sammy Davis Jr. With the title track from his 1968 reprise release, I've Gotta Be Me. This is a varied vocal performance in front of a full orchestra, which is itself packed with sonic variation. Now, before we get to the front row speakers and how they performed, what should they note on this record in particular? Well, right from the off, there are elements in this record that take advantage of the upper frequencies, and they arrive in a bunch. 
There's a cymbal in there that's consistently tapped. An acoustic guitar is strummed so delicately that it sounds like a stream of bells. Oh, and there are bells, real bells, that join in a little later on. All of this information needs a blend of focus, precision and space, but also a dynamic reach to capture all of this information. And during the actual sound tests, the front row delivered a lot of these points, but not all of them. So I heard space, but not too much. There was air across the soundstage, but I would have liked more. There was a bank of violins on the left sound channel that sat in a pool of reverb. Actually, we're talking 1968, so echo, I would say. We're talking more primitive echo from a basic echo chamber here, but these violins sat in a pool of that echo. But that echo didn't really run far enough for my liking. Connected with that was a roll-off at the top of the mid-band, which added a slight warming effect. Now, I'm well aware that my sonic observations may be relative in that if you're used to boxed speakers, you may listen to these hybrids and think, wonderful, they sound great, exactly what I'm looking for. And you should bear that in mind when you're listening to me babbling on about the sound quality of these speakers. Because where I'm coming from is as an experienced electrostatic speaker user. I'm so used to electrostatic panels, I know what they can do. And I'm judging the front rows based on my experience with the standard electrostatic technologies. So as I say, if you're more of a boxed fan, you may not hear the same sorts of criticisms that I do. So just bear that in mind. On the other side of the fence, all of the instruments were illustrated and pretty clearly too. There was a smooth translation of all of the important sources that gave the front row designs an effortless, straightforward approach. What I liked about the speakers were the smooth, rather cuddly approach to vocal jazz, which was almost 70s-like in their nostalgic presentation. Now there's a point in this song where the drummer suddenly realises that actually he's a cross between Keith Moon and the gentleman who plays percussion for the Muppets, and he becomes steadily wilder and wilder. The drums are then slowly pushed forwards in the mix. Now with a standard pair of electrostatics, you slowly become aware of the individual drum types in that drum kit. There's the bass drum, of course, there's the snares, the tom-toms. You can hear the slight tonal differences, the character of each and every drum. And I miss that with the front row speakers. I missed the subtle tonalities from the array of different drum types. You could hear them, don't get me wrong, but the variation wasn't as great as I wanted here, even though, as I say, that information was still here in its basic form. The front row speakers told you the story of the song, but added a slightly veiled 70s nostalgic warmth to the tale itself. It's interesting to think that if you'd bought this record back in 1968, this is probably the tone of the sound you would have no doubt heard back then. So in that respect, there was a sense of authenticity to the music heard here. So much for vocal jazz. I decided to then go a little bit more dynamic. I picked a CD from Depeche Mode and the track Personal Jesus. Now this was more like it. The high energy bass output rarely suited the notable low frequency extension from the speakers. That upper mid-range warmth was still there along with a roll off at frequency extremes. But the high energy output and the greater importance of bass here meant that music offered a greater tonal balance. The front row speakers provided a real foot tapping energy, while the overall presentation was pretty pacey. The smooth nature of the translation gave the front row speakers its now signature smooth approach to the mids. The now energetic bass slotted in very easily, adding meat and strength that added to the overall enjoyment. Now the one thing I like about my own reference system is that it produces a pretty good 3D effect around the stereo image. 
The front row speakers didn't really enhance that 3D effect. If anything, it slightly reduced it, but that was replaced by the inherent smooth running of both mid-range and bass. The track offered such an easy translation of rock power. That effect was confirmed while adding quick plays of CDs from Thin Lizzy, The Who and Yes. I have to say though that while listening to rock or high energy synth based pop like Depeche Mode, there were times from the front row when the sound sounded absolutely delicious. So for example, the long vocal synth based outro to Depeche Mode's Personal Jesus just sounded lovely with its punchy, bassy lower elements and the warming synth translation. In fact, during this track, I was busy making notes about what I was hearing and my interpretation of the sound, and I was typing away, and I was literally dragged from the keyboard. I just had to listen to this outro. It was so compelling. These speakers really live and live well around dynamic rock or dynamic high energy music. So how do I conclude my review of the Mellow Acoustics front row speakers. Well, in aesthetic terms, I think they're a complete disaster. Your view might be different, but I've imagined prettier designs in a bowl of lamb curry. If you're into classical music or jazz, and these genres are very important to you, then the front row design will not provide the performance you demand. There's not enough dynamic reach to provide the information and clarity you need, although they are fine for occasional classical jazz use. On the other hand, if you want to venture into rock or electronica or anything in that area, then you need to give the front row designs serious consideration because they offer a sort of golden warming presentation with enough detail in the rock sense and grunt to give music an exciting presentation. Combine the aesthetics with their sonic characteristics and you have a unique and head-turning design. These front row speakers are anything but Me Too designs. They're head-turners. They're anything but safe. They have real character. All of these facets are rarities in an industry that's scared to put a screw head out of place for fear of offending and losing sales. So for all of these reasons, I'm prepared to stand up on my hind legs and give them a long round of applause. And that's it for this particular video. Thank you very much for staying to the end of the video and thank you also for your support. And if you haven't done so already, can I request that you click on the like button below and also subscribe if you haven't already done that. Check out the description for the company quotes from the designer Tim Mello, as I mentioned earlier on. There's also some links down there to my own website. There's a host of editorial, which you don't see on this channel that you can find over there. There's links to my social media pages, also my Patreon page, and there's some exclusive editorial over there. There's a variety of tier options that you can choose. And I will be back next week with another video. So until that time, bye bye for now.